The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is proudly brought to you by NetWealth. For over 21 years, NetWealth has provided market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help wealth businesses thrive. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important to embrace new technology to enhance the way you run your business. With change comes your chance to use advanced technology, reshape your client experience, and see wealth differently. Visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamond Titus and this week we're going to deep dive into Power BI. That was hard to say, Power BI. But joining me here today is an author, a fashionista, a data analyst and a fellow tech geek. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Rabina May. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Peter. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Fabulous. I'm really, I'm really excited of what we can dive into here. But before we do, let's just sort of get to know you a little better through your use of technology. What's your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? I do use emojis. Okay. And my phone tells me my most used one is the thumbs up. And I have a feeling that's the slightly passive aggressive Yep, got it. End convo. Don't have time to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Closely followed by the letter K. I, I reckon the letter yep, K yep. is a K. Okay, all right. K, or KK. We have a bit of KK going oh, on at work as well. That's really? a, like slightly more friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to remember that one. I love it. <laughs> and how about so smartphones? They're you know they're with us all the time now. We've got our own personal computers. If you had to get rid of everything on your smartphone and you just were left with three apps, what would you keep? So I probably check my social media more than anything else, okay. but I'd probably be quite happy to take that off. Yeah. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to go for my most useful apps. So I use an app called Snip, S-N-I-I-P. What that does is it allows you to schedule all your bills. So it will actually <gasps> scan your emails to figure out what bills you've got coming in there. It'll put it in the app. It'll tell you when it's due, how much, and then you can connect it to pay via credit card or via BPAY. So you can just let it do the work for you and just set and forget. So that's a really useful app that I love. That's fantastic. <laughs> what the listeners won't have picked up is my head went straight down and I wrote it down as <laughs> you described that. <laughs> Fabulous. What else have you got? What else other goodies? <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's a little bit more boring, but I do like Cello Park, which just allows you to have your parking is taken care of. So you just, rather than trying to find where on earth they've put the parking meter halfway up the street, you just put in the code of where you're parked and then it will just dock you the parking that you're actually there for rather than having to say, oh, I might be here for $8 worth. So that's another wow, good one. Wow, it is. And then I also like the Ritual app, which is a app that allows you to order food and coffee, et cetera, et cetera, in advance. So you order and pay and then you go pick it up. So nice. I like I like saving time and money. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Super organized. There's all those apps. I love it. I love it. Oh, they're such good tips. Look, I mean, we've. I feel like we should just finish. Like we've already got value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone done, done. Done. You don't need to about Power BI. You've got Snip. <laughs> Well, let's dive into that, shall we? For the listener, Rabina is actually a consultant. You work um, within Velata Consulting and, and the business works primarily with law firms implementing things like right. uh, Power BI. Is that right? 
Yeah, so our primary business is around practice management systems and document management systems and implementing and supporting those. But we do then want to be able to have other infrastructure around it to support law firms. One of those things that we utilise is Power BI in the business intelligence space. So law firms will need... um, often will need reporting that's a bit more than what they can get in their practice management Mm -hmm. systems. And so we utilise Power BI to uh, create custom reports from that data, but other data as well. So Power BI is a pretty powerful business intelligence tool that allows you to take data from lots of different places, and that's what we help law firms with. Perfect. And look, as I said to you before, we actually hit record on the pod. Um, I actually like the idea of us talking through your lessons from law law firms because Mm -hmm. I think they're far more similar to advice firms than people would think. You know, there's heavy on the paperwork, you know, heavy client focused and probably not taking advantage of the data they already have or or the way they could utilize it. So I think there's probably a lot of overlap there um, in terms of what we could learn. So Power BI sits in that sort of business data reporting dashboardy space. Is that a fair sort of, you know, in terms of categorizing it um, for everybody yeah, listening? So, yeah. So it's a business intelligence tool, which is slightly different from just a custom reporting tool. Yep. So the idea of business intelligence, so if, I, I like to look at it this way. If you think about running a report from, say, your practice management system or, or any kind of management CRM system. CRM or whatever it is. It tends yeah. to be whatever it is, yeah. it tends to be fairly robust. You tend to have to kind of really analyze that data before you can surface anything interesting about it. Okay. Whereas a business intelligence tool tries to go the other way so that you're using interactive visuals so that you can see those points of interest up top and then you can dive in and see what might be causing that. So it's really great once it's all made <laughs> for people that aren't so keen on data. Yeah. You just want to be able to see really quickly, oh, okay, you know, my debtors are a bit of a problem or, uh, oh, there's a, there's a goal we're not hitting. What should we do about that? And then going down and understanding the data that's sitting behind it. Yeah. Okay. And so the, the visual nature of this is a core part of it. It's, it's that dashboardy thing that's real. I mean, it's like the dial on your car. So you can really tell instantly I'm speeding or I'm not. It's something that's really, um, has a quick message, which I think yeah. for anybody, you know, running a, running or owning a small or medium sized business, then, those things are hard to get and invariably we get that information too late. It's always sort of later looking back as opposed to live when you're in the business. So I think, you know, business intelligence is that next level up where you're sort of tweaking things on the fly um, and and learning as it's happening as opposed to looking back when you do your accounts and going, oh, you know, we should have responded to that differently. So um, to me, that the dynamic nature of that is exciting. So in terms of what people might otherwise be using, what are the things that they're trying, you know, if they don't have Power BI or aren't aware of it, what are, what are they currently using as an alternative? So I tend to think of Power BI a little bit like Excel on steroids. Mm-hmm. It just takes Excel to this next level. So a lot of people will use Excel and then, you know, struggle with V lookups or if you're getting a yep. little bit more exciting, you might be into Power Query. Okay. Um, but it's still a little bit of a clunky tool to try and combine different data sets and then the visualizations within Excel are, are a bit more limited compared to what you can do with Power BI. Okay. But, um, Excel is probably the thing that most people would use to combine their data if they don't have access to a business intelligence tool. And then, of course, there are lots of other business intelligence tools on the market. Um, people might know Google Analytics, yep. Tableau. Um, we've chosen to focus on Microsoft's Power BI because it just sits really neatly within the Microsoft stack and most of our clients are, you know, use Microsoft. Perfect. Okay. So then the, it sounds like the primary problem that Power BI is trying to solve then is that accessible and really quickly absorbable information. So as opposed to the raw data itself, which is often where people try and start and then it takes forever to pull together, um, mm. it's about making that really accessible and and choosing the data you want. So I'm sort of picturing that as the dashboard of you only see the things you want to see. Is that fair? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. And Power BI does have the capability to take data from different sources. Ooh. So for, say, 
a law firm, you definitely want information from your practice management system, but maybe you also want information from your um, Google Analytics and you want to know where people are coming to you from. Maybe you also want to connect to Zero because you do a bunch of your accounting in Zero. Yeah. Maybe you've got a CRM system, maybe you use HubSpot and you want to bring in data from that as well. So as long as you've got some way of accessing that data, Power BI can bring it all together in one spot, then you just need to figure out how it all kind of matches together and that's probably where the more technical side of things is. But once you've done that, you can start to look at things really creatively. Yeah, okay. And we'll come back to that data matching thing because I'm a bit curious about that because clearly <laughs> there's multiple types and locations of data and, and how do you tidy that and what do you do with it? So we'll come back to that. But I do think in terms of then it's targeted at initially my first thought was well clearly power bi is targeted at the practice manager slash owner like it's at that high level yes, yes um in terms of business intelligence but what about you know that secondary user what about the individual in a practice is it something that you can then tailor for somebody in a role that's you know more fulfilling something more functional is there value that power bi can bring to them Yes, absolutely. So what our law firms will do is say they've got a set of metrics that the firm needs to um, hopefully arrive at. There'll be a firm-wide dashboard that might show that. And that might be more information than, say, a lawyer might need, or it might be more sensitive than what you might want just a lawyer to see. Yep. But then a lawyer might have their own individual dashboard, which is tracking their progress. So their progress against their KPIs, whether that be billable hours or um, how their debtors are going or you know, what they're investing in business development or precedent development or all those other things that aren't necessarily um, fee generating right. but do build the business. And that's the other nice thing about Power BI because you can bring in data from different sorts of data sets. The traditional metrics can be augmented by those other things that we all know are really important to building any business, not just law firms. Yeah. And it's, um, look, it's so interesting because, I mean, the one thing about, you know, financial advisors, we love a good graph. So the, the, we don't need to be convinced to um, have a screen full of, you know, any visual representation to that sense. If anything, we probably love them a bit too much. Um, but I think what we, what we probably haven't taken further is that bringing together all of those multiple sources, you know, bringing together all those multiple places that we can get data. And there's so many for us that I can really see you know, across multiple softwares, even product providers. I mean, we've got, you know, connections to super platforms that like all sorts of things that over time you could probably start to get some really useful insights um, that would, you know, help either, it, like you say, an individual member of the team or the sort of business as a whole. To that end, is there a tip, a particular type of business or the way they run it that this works really well for or conversely one where it's like this is never going to work? Like is the cloud got to be a thing or what? <laughs> how does P Power BI really implement well? So it does it does implement well in a cloud-based environment. It is a cloud-based product. However, there's a number of different things that um, allow Power BI to connect to data sets that are on-prem as well. And the other thing that – so when we think about – data sets, it can get really, really complex or it can be really simple. Okay. So, for instance, you can take an Excel spreadsheet and you can publish that up to Power BI and create that as a data source. Using Power Query, you can even upload things like PDF documents and be able to extract the data okay. from the PDF. So, even if you're getting a bunch of more paper-based kind of information together, you can feed that through to Power BI and start connecting things together and playing with it. So, you don't necessarily have to invest in you know, a whole bunch of APIs and a whole bunch of technical stuff, right. you can you can do that at what might be considered a less technical level. Yeah, okay. And I guess that's, um, yes, yeah, so for somebody that's a bit data focused like I am, my background is, you know, actuarial and, and financial analyst, all that sort of stuff, then I would probably get a little obsessed about the extent to which the data is matching when in fact, what it sounds like is you're looking for themes or key messages out of the data. And the fact that that set doesn't perfectly match this set isn't as important as the you know the overarching is it going up is it going down is there a flag sort of messaging so yeah and look I think one of the things that we often do come across is that trust in the data because lawyers would you believe it <laughs> are very particular about such things as well oh, so I they bet. will often be looking to balance back their reporting yeah so um, yes, I think it's good to look at your data and understand that if it's, you know, $3 out, it 
the trend is probably still the trend. Yeah. Um, but what we also find is helpful, and this is something to think about if you get into Power BI and creating these reports, is just to be really transparent about how you are calculating things okay. so that people start building that trust in that data. Yeah, that's fair enough. And is there any, you know, if somebody's thinking along these lines, is there any sort of insider tips or things you'd suggest they do before even going down this path? Is there any tidying or, or you know, ducks in a row they can get that, that would help them really take advantage of something like Power BI? So there's probably a couple of different things within that question. So you do want to make sure that your data sources are as clean as possible. If you're wanting to connect them together, you're probably going to have to do some cleanup in any case. So whether or not you do that at the data source level or whether or not you do that within the tools within Power BI. So um, like Excel, Power BI has Power Query behind it, which enables you to take those data sources and apply some cleanup. Okay. And Power Power Query is probably one of the most powerful tools in the Microsoft world that not everybody knows about. So if you're at all interested in Excel, please look up Power Query. Your your mind will be blown. (laughs) Have a look. Head going down again, writing that down. Right there. (laughs) You can say goodbye to VLOOKUP so you can just use Power Query. (laughs) Um, So you'll need to do your data cleanup in in that regard. I think with anything, it's worth stepping back and understanding why you're doing it, what you're trying to achieve. So if you're wanting to say to yourself, okay, I need this nice, clean way of presenting um, things in a visual way to my clients, Mm. think about what that's going to look like. Think about the data sources that are going to feed into that Mm -hmm. and then go from there and start utilizing the tools to build that that out. Um, I think very often we get excited about new tools and what to do with them. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, we always need to be solving a business problem. Um, so that that's where I would absolutely start. Then maybe clean up your data and then have a ball with all the um, <laughs> cool graphs and things. But you've got to do your homework before you get to the cool graphs. Absolutely. And I sort of see that in um, even in our you know, our team are right across tech. They understand the value of data, of utilizing fields that we've decided to use, say, in a CRM or anything like that. But even then, they may still use each field differently. And so mm. having the rules of how we record things, yeah. the, the names we always consistently use or whatever it is, makes then the value of something like Power BI even more valuable because there's probably less oh, it's that, that and that we mean here. You know, like yeah. it's that sort of tidy up where somebody uses one word and something others use two. And like it's just, you know, it can get really um, messy. So that's sort of, well, it's almost your own glossary or, or consistent way that you refer mm-hmm. to things in the practice can make a huge difference on betting for this type of thing. You just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a bit of a saying kind of in the data world about garbage in, garbage out. Yes. So, but treasure in, treasure out as well. Yes. So, if you keep things clean and useful, that is what you'll be able to utilize at the other end. And I guess the other thing I'd say too, like these projects can just seem unfathomably big, you know, like it's, oh, you want me to tidy my data, you know, like, uh, and it really can be overwhelming. What we do sometimes with some of these things is we go, yes, we want to end up down there in this wonderful position. We're going to take six months to transition there. And as everybody interacts with a certain field, whatever it is, we'll tidy it organically. And we only do it mm. that way because most, A, most of us can't just close the doors and spend every minute for a whole team of tidying something or getting it right. So I find sometimes, depending on what the efforts required is, you know, the organic change and then going, all right, we've got it done. Now we're ready to do, you know, whatever we wanted to do with that, you know, cleaner data can be a good way to go. Um, Sometimes you want to do it all in a hit, but sometimes it's like, no, 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 just work towards it. Just, you know, get there in the end. And I think the nice thing about Power BI is once you've kind of got your way around it, it's quite a quick development tool. So in that situation where you are trying to encourage people to, you know, clean up the data, hey, let's be consistent with our approach on how we're recording things. Yeah. If you can kind of show people, because this is what we're going to get to at the end, if you can keep things clean, you're going to get these amazing visuals that are going to be super helpful if you get this right, can kind of help people along that journey. Yeah, fabulous. And I, I think something you just mentioned, you used the word client in terms of visualizations. And so I had mentally just been applying this across the business and even maybe a team member. But is there ways to use this with client data and the way you represent things to them as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. We're actually working with um, an accountant at the moment. So sometimes we do um, do cross paths. So this accountant <laughs> works heavily with, with law firms. And what he's looking to do is to create a bit of a dashboard and pull certain bits of information together. And then because he's working with lots of different clients, um, also kind of use that as a benchmark as ah, well yes. to see where people are, are kind of up to. So you can definitely do that. You can definitely take bits of data and you can secure it via Power BI. So um, a little bit like what we talk, talked about with the, the fee owner or the lawyer only seeing their data in the same way you could apply that security to a to a client so that they could just see their information. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Well, that's probably got some people just cogitating there because it's once again, the data we have on clients comes from so many different places and it is very, even even the best of, you know, tailored financial advice solutions often will struggle to get all of that in one place. So, you know, mm. if we need to be the hub of all of that, then maybe there is um, some particular visualizations that some of the, you know, listeners could come up with using Power BI. Mm. Now, something I did want to just sort of touch on, we've been talking about data and I think when people hear that, they hear, so spreadsheets, definitely numbers in spreadsheets um, and maybe fields like in see like so they think that sort of stuff. Mm. I'm guessing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but another type of data could be activity. So it could be task completed or activities. Is that something else that Power BI can be used to sort of go, you know, how are people going? How much are they getting done? What are this, what's their capacity? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we actually do a fair amount of task-based reporting um, in, in what we offer our clients. Um, so a, a lot of areas of law are very heavily task-based. So if you think of maybe like conveyance things and something that people can get their heads around being task-based fairly quickly. Um, and then you can measure the time that it's taking between certain points within that process, whether or not there's anything that you need to speed up, whether or not there's a point at which, um, you know, even if you think of a in more like an inquiry, process is there a point in which clients become disengaged yeah. is there an amount of time i mean you know if you let your imagination run loose with data there is like you could just measure everything yes. <laughs> and just spend all your time just looking at all of these dashboards <laughs> <laughs> well i will say i will say and i did say that i like to save time and money at yeah. the top um, one thing that i love about power bi is it does focus people's attention on the actual interesting things about the data right. rather than spending all of that time trying to collate it. And by the time that you've, you know, gone through and you've done your V lookups and you've put all your Excel spreadsheets together and you've created a bunch of graphs, who then has time to look at it and right. actually go, what is this telling me? What is this telling me about my client? What is this telling me about my business? What should I be doing with this information? Right. <laughs> that that can kind of not even be a part of someone's job if they're spending all this time playing around with getting the data right. so And it is, I mean, in small business, we probably, if anything, we're not doing enough of the reporting probably. But in larger businesses, I've got a good friend that works in a large corporate and she's on a cycle every month where, you know, the whole team is down for a week because they're pulling together the executive reporting. And mm. every time she tells me and she sort of, you know, they drop off the radar because it's just flat out, like, how can this not be automated? I don't understand how human yeah, beings yeah, it's... are manually doing this. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely in that automation space. It actually, a little bit of a segue, but it actually um, ties in and integrates quite nicely with Microsoft's Power Automate, okay. which is another part of the Power Platform. Um, that's probably some something you could talk about to somebody else yep. about Power Automate, but it's another um, fabulous tool that tries to address some of those things you've just talked about, just people spending time on stuff that could be automated and then they can use their brilliant creative minds in more brilliant creative ways. Yeah. And look, I, th I think the the thing with this sort of information and and particularly, you know, time taken or or delays, I think it can be hard because the team can take that somewhat personally. You know, they're like, no, oh, they're just measuring me and, you know, I'm just a worker bee. And, and whereas in fact, what you're trying to identify is bottlenecks. Like what's the thing that holds you up? And you only get mm. that if you can see the transition, you know, if you're measuring, that's the only way you're going to get it. So to me, that's the way I sort of suggest it to the team is I just want to pick out those bottlenecks. What are the things we can do to sort of break that such that, like you say, either the client gets disengaged, which happens, right? If it, if something doesn't keep its momentum up, then they lose interest and they're not, you know, maybe returning a phone call as quickly as they could or whatever occurs. So I think, you know, that type of insight is really fascinating um, and could be really beneficial, I think, for most businesses. Is there anything that you think 
you know, it's, there might be some listeners that are already into Power BI and they're experimenting and have got some dashboards happening. Is there any sort of features or anything that you see that most just don't take advantage of, you know, that just don't go deep enough? So Microsoft is continually updating this product. Mm-hmm. I often go into um, Power BI services and just like, oh, that looks different. What have they, <laughs> what have they added in today? <laughs> um, so I think a big part of it is just staying on top of those changes okay. um, and I find Guy with a Cube, who's a Power BI um, YouTuber, like really useful. He's got short, quick, will generally cover off um, those uh, updates and things like that. Um, nothing beats just having a little bit of a play in there. Mm. And what I'm noticing is that they are increasingly trying to tighten the integration between Power BI and the Office 365 products. Okay. So something that's recently come in is in PowerPoint, there's now some more native integration with Power BI so that you can pull your live reports directly into a PowerPoint deck. So you can imagine if you're presenting to the to the broader team yes. about how things are going, that you just have this interactive graph, which you can just share with people that's connected to your live data. Ooh. Yeah, the possibilities are endless. Oh, so yeah. just, um, Ooh, that's very <laughs> Just exploring all those integrations, okay. I think, is something that people can really leverage. Absolutely. Um, I do think, I mean, everyone, everyone's busy. I think every, COVID didn't make people less busy. COVID <laughs> seemed to make people much more busy. Definitely. Um, and I think if you are now in that space where you're utilising Power BI, just making that space to play because I do think that's where the gold is found is just trying to be a bit more creative with it, trying to look at different ways of using it just so that people kind of understand how it works. Yeah. So Power BI, in terms of how you develop your reports, is developed using a tool called Power BI Desktop. Mm-hmm. That's a free tool. You can download that and start using it. So in the back end, it looks a little bit like Excel, and then in the front end, it looks like a custom reporting tool. Okay. But like Excel or any of those other tools, it's the tool that you would edit it in, but it's not necessarily the tool that you would use to distribute it to people to have a look at. Okay. So the tool that you use to distribute it to have a look at is called Power BI Services. That is a paid. This is what Microsoft okay. does. Okay. <laughs> Shows you the value of its product. Gives and then you a taste. The real, <laughs> gives you a taste. And then the real real value, well, we have to make money, guys. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You'll Fair have enough. to pay for that bit. Fair enough. If it's adding um, value, that's all good. <laughs> exactly. So you publish your reports then up to Power BI services and that's where you can then give people access to it. So in both in Power BI services and in Power BI desktop, those products are continually being added to by Microsoft. Um, And in Power BI services in particular, they've just added some scorecards and some different metrics and different ways of looking at things. And one of the areas they seem particularly interested in is more on that data storytelling side of things yeah, so okay. that you can sort of just ask it an unstructured question and it's going to give you some feedback, yeah, okay. which is, um, yeah, it's interesting and fun to play with. Sometimes it doesn't quite hit the mark. Yep. But, yeah, it's it's there to, to play with and have a look at. And in both of those sets of things, Power BI Desktop and Power BI Services, I'd recommend just continue to play. Yeah. <laughs> and, look, I think um, data visualisation is something that, I think, you know, particularly in finance, what will, like when we say that, probably most advisors or people in the industry will think, oh, graph lines, maybe a crazy Mm. pie chart. Like that's as far as they go. Whereas really great data visualization is more like the, is it the times or one of the, one of the papers in the US when they do that, you know, it's the bubbles or it's the, the moving, the thing that moves over time. Like there's some really clever and interactive and engaging ways of visualizing Mm. data that I'm betting that's where, Power BI is trying to go, like it's trying to make it something that is accessible to anybody, not just, you know, nerds like me that love XY graphs, you know, like <laughs> we want something that's that's also anchors the message, you know, it really instantly gives somebody exactly what they need to know without being able to interpret, you know, in a strange graph language. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've seen a nice Venn diagram that has, so if you've got data, you've got your visualizations, but then you also have narrative and it's in that narrative piece that you're really applying those more interesting kinds of visualizations and that context that people can just understand straight away without, you know, having to refer back to statistics in grade 10 math. Exactly. Um, And there's a 
great website called Information is I think it's called Information is Beautiful. I'm just having a look oh yes, yes, it. yes. Oh, I know exactly uh, you know who you talk. Yes, 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 and that is amazing. Just like, incredible. There is just incredible visualizations there, and if you're ever feeling a little bit, I don't know, bored of your XY graphs, <laughs> your, your pie graphs, you can go in there and just have your mind blown. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's uh, because what you, you know, like the storytelling or the narrative is actually what you're trying to communicate. You're not actually trying to communicate the data, you know, and that's a tough thing, I think, in finance for us to let go of. I think we think it's about the data and it's not. The data is what's underlying it. The data is sort of like what um, what research scientists have. Like that's they don't share all of that when it when they announce something in the paper mm. or whatever. It's what's the outcome, you know? What's the discovery? Uh, and so the more we can move towards that, I think that's really exciting, you know. And to sort of view Power BI, maybe you start with getting those insights just for your business or just for your team, but to sort of just really open your mind to the possibilities there. I think that's uh, that's where we all probably need to to move. Well, and probably lawyers too. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot there, yeah, right? That's changing the mindset and the way we sort of approach what we do and how we deliver it. Um, it's really exciting. Is there, and I'm, I'm betting they're just constantly developing that. So that's just something that iterates over time. Power yeah, BI. Definitely. They're just con- yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's um, a very lovely community around Power BI as well. And you can, uh, so Power BI will come with a set of fairly standard visuals. Yep. So you've, you've got your XY graphs, you've got your pie graphs, you've got a few more exciting ones like waterfall graphs, Ooh. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's some some cool mapping if you've got some regional stuff going on okay. as well so that you can see those hotspots in different regions. Yep. But then there is a whole library of data visuals that other people have developed and very kindly added to the Microsoft library that you can then pick from as well and use Ooh. those in your reports. You have to be a little bit careful. It's a bit like downloading random apps on your, yep. your mobile phone. You might want to be a little bit judicious about yep. the ones you choose. Yep. Um, but it does open up just a, a whole other uh, spectrum of visualizations wow. that you can utilize. And I'm betting then there's probably the even further – you know, level where you could probably pace, like if you had a particular thing in mind, you could probably pay somebody to really come up with that so that they could, you know, tailor the visual. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's quite, that's quite sophisticated next level. Power BI yeah. skills. <laughs> okay. That's the next level up to be able to actually create the data visualizations themselves. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Is there anything you feel we've missed? Anything that, uh, you know, the listener should know or be wary of? Anything to watch out for? Um, I think you can get a little bit excited and you can make your dashboards potentially a little more complex than they need to be. Yeah. So probably just always thinking about the end user and who your audience is. I've talked a bit about storytelling. Think about your audience. Yep. Trying to keep things just nice and clean. And there's lots of examples of that. So okay. I think um, sometimes I find that quite helpful. Just have a bit of a Google search. Just have a look at what other people have done in that space yeah, to okay. try and not get too overboard with a million graphs, which might look pretty, but someone's going to look at it and go, I really don't know what on earth is going on (laughs) here. Um, I do think like anything, Power BI does have a little bit of a hump to get over once you first start learning it. So persevere. There's an awful lot of information online. Just keep going with it. Start simply. So what I would advise people to do is download Power BI desktop, then maybe have a look for a tutorial that has a data set alongside it so that you can then play follow along yeah okay follow along and play with that and just understand how that works and just don't expect to be able to run before you can crawl <laughs> and if it is something you want to explore and then you kind of do hit some roadblocks there are obviously lots of different power bi consultants and professionals out there that you can touch base with we work obviously fairly specifically within the legal industry at Velada consulting um i imagine there might be people who work um, more yeah. in the financial yeah, advice i'm sure space there are i'm sure there are i think the difference for me these days when i think back when i was i mean this is a long time ago when i was a financial analyst and we were doing the hardcore excel stuff you had to buy those massive manuals. That was the only place you could get insights yeah. <laughs> about how to, how to use these things. Like there were these horrible sort of encyclopedia-like books that you had to flick through, you know, whereas these days find a great YouTube channel 
and you're yeah, sorted. Exactly. You know, like it's yeah, yeah. once you find that one that resonates, you'll just go there all the time. And invariably, often those people who host those, if you reached out with a specific query that you couldn't get an answer on, they probably answer it on the show. You know, so yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely. It's so people are so generous. Um, they're really keen to help, and there is such an overlap with what the things we do need to learn, if you know what I mean. So what we're trying to learn, and so it'll be there. I'm confident that you know, if you just get a bit uh, creative with Google and and do that search. Yeah, I would be something. searching daily for, you know, different sorts of things to do yeah. um, with Power BI. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Ooh, all right, Advice Explorers. So if you'd like to find out more about Power BI and maybe Velata, then you, the website link will be in the episode show notes, but please also um, we'll include uh, Rabina's LinkedIn details. So, you know, maybe reach out, maybe, um, you know, check in and connect with her if you've got questions or maybe join a Power BI group. Um, oh, yep, there's might, plenty of them. Exactly. Yep. Then you mm-hmm. might have some suggestions. But, you know, thank you so much for joining us, Rabina. And I sort of love that I, you know, this actuarially trained financial advice, uh, financial analyst just got schooled on the use of data. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I do get very excited about data. So I hope <laughs> – People get a little bit excited about it too. <laughs> yeah, this, this has been fantastic. I have no doubt everybody's got some great value. So thank you very much. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So are you a current user of Power BI? I feel like that's something we should have to declare now in financial advice. Are you using this? Because, you know, we should all be using this. Um, maybe you agree or disagree, you know, with uh, Rabina and my chat um, on Power BI. Please share your insights on the XY community platform. I'd love personally to hear your take, maybe any tips, some great insights you've got from using the tool and perhaps, you know, some heads up or suggestions for your fellow advisors or people in the industry that that are just starting out, you know, what you discovered as you started using the tool. In terms of my thoughts, you know, I guess financial advice, we really operate across so many platforms, softwares, you know, and we gather an awful lot of data. And, you know, what's clear is that we're simply not making sense of what the underlying themes and messages that are available in that data and what exists. You know, we're, we're sort of not trying to dig out the patterns and therefore the opportunities for improvement. We're sort of just letting that data sort of sit there and percolate. You know, the old saying is, you know, what gets measured gets managed. I would propose that advice explorers like us see it as what gets measured gets upgraded. Yeah. So, you know, for a long time, there's been I think some industry expectations that, say, product providers might be where great data insights can live. You know, aside from software providers, maybe they, the product providers should be giving us great data insights, or maybe it should be dealer groups, you know. But as I think about it, you know, having chatted to Rabina, the financial advice business is at the heart of it all. So, you know, we get data from both sides. We get it from our clients, we get it from our suppliers and partners. So if we can harness that data, then maybe this is where the real evolution of financial advice gets sparked, you know, and that's really exciting. The other thought I had was if you are going to go down this path and be looking for those sort of business intelligence insights, then I would suggest just picking maybe three things you want to know initially, you know, three bits of insight or three themes you want to be able to pick up on or or patterns. Don't go overboard like Rabina said. You know, I completely agree with her there. Just pick three, practice, get it working, get it humming, and then over time you'll work out either you start massaging that and and the thing that you were measuring improves, you no longer feel a need to focus on it, and then you choose a new thing, or you can start to add a few more as you get used to this sort of dashboard concept. But don't overcook it. Don't have a massive dashboard with all these things because, to be frank, you won't use it uh, in the end. Now, that was a pretty – strategy heavy topic, right? That was pretty full on. So I thought for today's Curiosity Corner, I would bring to your attention an app that I've come across that, you know, tweaked my interest, but in fact is a whole lot of fun as well. So for this week's Curiosity Corner, I'd love you to check out Habitica, H-A-B-I-T-I-C-A, and you can find that at habitica.com. Now their tagline is gamify your life. And they've basically built a free 
habit building and productivity app that sort of treats your real life like a game. So think the games like Myst or any of those games, Dungeons and Dragons, these sort of things when you earned progress and points and, and rewards and collected, you know, gold, that sort of thing. So Habitica has in-game rewards and punishments even to motivate you and a strong social network to inspire you to make change, to build new habits. And so it can help you achieve your goals to say being healthy or or more productive or just generally happy and more upbeat. Um, you can check off tasks to level up your avatar. You can unlock in-game features like battle armor and mysterious pets and magic skills. You can even go on quests. Um, you can use it anytime you're trying to form a new habit. And I'd say, give it a try. You know, once you get used to it, I'm sort of wondering, and I haven't gone down this path yet, but I'm sort of wondering if there's a new habit that you could perhaps start a quest on that you could do with some clients even. You know, is there something that you could all join together, motivate each other and make some progress on? You know, really, I'd just encourage you to sort of keep an open open mind as we try out these out of left field tools, as you just never know when you might come across one that just becomes a game changer for you, for your business or for your client offer. So check it out and let me know what you think. Okie dokie. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on how they too can become bionic advisors, being the best of human and technology, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 